Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to more of the Grade 11 Multiple Choice Fermat Contest put out by the uh, CEMC. We're up to question number 23, so if you're looking for any of the other videos, uh, we've got two more coming up, 24 and 25, but all the other ones, uh, so one up to 22, those are previous videos, so feel free to check them out. Doing question number 23, so let's take a look. Hopefully you've already taken a look at it by getting a copy of the contest for yourself. A sequence, T1, T2, all the way up to Tn, is defined as follows. T1 starts off at 14, and then we get each new Tk, for each uh, k greater than or equal to 2, uh, we can define it from the, the previous one. It's 24 minus 5 Tk minus 1. So we get the uh, previous number gives us the, the the previous number gives us our new number here. For every positive integer n, Tn can be expressed as Tn equals p times q to the n plus r, where p, q, and r are constants. What is the value of p plus q plus r? Okay. Hmm. So, um, well, we have a sequence. It might be a good idea to maybe try and write out a little bit of the sequence, just so we get a better understanding of what's going on here. So we're told T1 is 14, Tk is 24, minus 5, Tk minus 1. So uh, if we had n, Tn, 1, 2, 3, 4, we'll just do a couple of them. So we start off with 14, and then we need 24 minus 5 times 14. I believe that's 24 minus 70, which is negative 46, and the calculator confirms that. And then uh, to get to T3, we'll do 24 minus 5 times negative uh, 46. Which gives us uh, 254. So these numbers... I'm not noticing a pattern yet, and it looks like things are just going to get bigger and bigger. For T4, we do 24 minus 5 times, what was the previous one? 2, 4, uh, 5, 4. And we get negative 1,246. So the only thing I'm really noticing is that it seems to alternate uh, sign every single time. Now, in my formula... which is uh, Tn equals uh, P times Qn plus R. The most logical place to alternate sign would be Q. So I suspect that uh, Q is going to be a negative number. Because when I think of a sequence like this switching sign, I usually think the culprit is something like negative 1 to the n, which goes 1, well, negative 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. It always switches signs. So I suspect that uh, q is negative. Now, if it, if it doesn't, I mean, once we get our p, q, and our r, which hopefully we will be able to isolate and get p, q, and r, there, I don't think there's going to be some way to just get p plus q plus r out of this, unlike uh, the last question. Was it the last question? One, or two, one of the questions in Part C so far has been about uh, a water jug being flipped up and down. And we were able to uh, get, yeah, it was the last question because there it is on the, the screen there. But uh, we were able to get uh, h, plus, uh, h plus little h all together. And that just sort of popped out of the equation, whereas we, uh, where we weren't able to get h and then little h and then add them together. I suspect it's going to be different for this one. I suspect we're going to be able to find p, find q, and find r and then add them up at the end. That's that's just my suspicion. So I should get Q as negative at some point in there. But either way, once I get my P, Q, and R, I can check to make sure it's the right formula, because here I have four examples of the numbers here. So I know that uh, 14 is T1. And plugging that into my formula, I should get P times Q to the 1 plus R 
which of course is just P times Q plus R. Not helpful yet, but it might be uh, might be helpful later on when we want to uh, maybe we're we're solving something and then we just need a little extra piece of information. Knowing that P times Q plus R is equal to 14 might make all the difference. But let's take a look at our recursive formula. We're going to plug numbers in there. So I know that TK is equal to 24 minus 5, TK minus 1. Well, let's plug in our general formula. P times Q to the K plus R should be equal to 24 minus 5. So maybe Q is minus 5 here, just, just uh, guessing. Uh, so that's P times Q to the K minus 1 plus R. And we'll simplify this side. So minus 5 P times Q to, K, uh, Q to the K minus 1 minus 5 R. Well, let's group uh, some like terms. Uh, let's, let's get our... Um, R acts sort of like a constant term, so I'm actually going to get all my R's onto the right-hand side with this 24 here. And I'm going to get all of my uh, P's and Q's over here. 24, and then it'll be minus 6R. So uh, we did get a factor of P here, and we'll have... Actually, we did get a factor of uh, P and q to the k minus 1. That'll be q plus 5. And that'll be equal to 24. Well, we can take out a factor of 6, frankly. Um, 6, 4, minus R. Okay. Now, I'm noticing that, uh, well, other than this K minus 1, this equation is pretty constant. So, if I were to do the same thing but with K plus 1, well, I know that that's uh, 24 minus 5 TK. I can work it all the way down once again using the exact same steps to this. Okay. But now look here. I've got uh, these constant terms here are going to be the same. but I've differed by a factor of Q. So what I'm trying to say is both of these equations have to be zero, which should tell me that, Q, that R is four and that Q is negative five. But uh, let's see if we can actually show that. Well, these guys have got to be equal. So we've got P, Q to the K minus one, Q plus five is equal to P, Q to the K, Q plus 5. Okay, now are we told anything about P and Q? Can I just, uh, um, P, Q, and R are constants. Okay, now we know that P and Q can't be 0, because if either one of them are 0, then every TN would just be R. So neither P nor Q are zero. Otherwise we'd have uh, everything is constant, which we know is not true because look at the uh, sequence that we worked out. 14, negative 46. 
I think it was 200 something. So let's divide by P. Well, then, uh, uh, actually, let's divide by P times Q to the K minus 1. By the way, if at this stage uh, back here with this uh, P uh, Q to the K minus 1 times Q plus 5 equals 6, 4 minus R, if your instincts there are telling you, well, both sides have to be 0, by all means proceed. It's a multiple choice question. It's not a proof style question, so you should be fine. Okay, so now we have just something in Q, and we can... Uh, Expand this out and rearrange, and we get q squared plus 4q minus 5 is equal to 0. Uh, we could use the quadratic formula on that, or we could use uh, uh, we could use uh, just factoring in our head. So we're looking for two numbers that add to positive 4 and multiply to negative 5. That's going to be positive 5 and negative 1. So q is equal to 1 or negative 5. Now q can't be equal to 1. Because otherwise every term uh, is constant again. Okay, so that tells me that Q has got to be equal to negative 5. I think I guessed at that a little while ago. Alright, so we know we've got Q is equal to negative 5. And now that uh, if we plug that back into one of these uh, two equations over here on the left, We, be, we can figure out what R is. So we have 6 times 4 minus R. Well, that's P. Q to the K minus 1. Q plus 5. Which is equal to 0. And that tells us that R is equal to 4. Okay. And now I've got Q, I've got R, I want P. Well, I know that 14 is equal to P times negative 5 to the 1 plus 4. So that's uh, negative 5P plus 4. 10 is going to be equal to negative 5P. We're just subtracting off 4 from both sides. So P is going to be negative 2. P is negative 2, Q is negative 5, and R is 4. So we want their sum. P plus Q plus R, well that's going to be negative 2 plus negative 5 plus 4. That's negative 7 plus 4. We should get an answer of negative 3. So negative 3, is that one of our options? There it is, it's B. So we'll say B negative 3. Now I've got this P, Q, and R, and I want to double check. I want to quickly make sure that I have not got the numbers wrong. Well, I worked out a couple other uh, terms in the sequence. I know negative 46, so that should be negative 2 times negative 5 squared plus 4. That's negative 2, uh, negative 5 squared, well that's basically the same as 5 squared, so that should be 25 plus 4. Negative 2 times 25, that's negative 50 plus 4, negative 46. So we checked that. Uh, let's throw one more in for good measure. And what was the next one? It was a much bigger number. 254.
So uh, 254, that was the third term in the sequence. Negative 2 times, that uh, will be negative 125. If you are having trouble with that, get your calculator out. But uh, 5 cubed, I'd say that's a fairly common uh, term or number. Uh, so that should be 250 plus 4. Well, what do you know? It's 254. So we've checked it twice. These numbers definitely work. So we get their sum, negative 2 plus negative 5 plus 4, negative 3. So our answer is B. It's a nice little question, and we're halfway through part C, so join me in the next video for uh, question number 24 as we continue on through the 2001 Fermat.